says before, I, God, I, I formed you in the womb. And then I knew you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Well, how did he know us, y'all? The word of God says no man has ever seen God. And, and, and so human flesh has not never seen God. So what is he saying? Well, the Bible says that God is, is a spirit. And them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then when God said, let us create man in our image and likeness, uh, in, John, in Genesis 1, 26, and, and then further going on in 1, 27, well, that was his pronouncement. But in, in Genesis 2, 7, the actual creation process is identified. He, uh, God, the Bible says, God formed man from the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils. By the spirit or breath, by his spirit or breath of life, and man became a living being. So what are we saying in the word of God? What the word of God is saying is that the, the image and likeness that man had, had nothing to do with this here flesh. But it absolutely had to do with God's spirit. So therefore, what we resemble is his spirit the spirit that he blew into us, that was the image and likeness that we had. So what is God saying in his word back in Jeremiah 1, 5? That we were spirit before we became flesh. And so therefore he knew us. Why did he know us? He created us. So nobody can know you like, like the one who created you. And not only did he know us, he had already established for us what we were going to become even before we became. Lord have mercy. Let me go back to Psalm 139. I think I sufficiently did what I need to do with Jeremiah 1 5. And this is what it says. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is what it said. For you did form, I'm at verse 13. For you did form my inward heart, and you did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise, for you are fearful and wonderful, for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works, and that my inner self knows right well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought, as if embroidered with various colors and depths of the region or a region uh, in the earth, a region of the darkness and mystery. Why is that? Because the way God, God created them, He He absolutely not only created us, He had already predestined what we were to become. Lord have mercy. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. And in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape. The word of God said that. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated and set you apart and anointed you a prophet to the nations. Before we were born, y'all, before we were born, God had already established what we are to become. So therefore, when the word of God says that uh, your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. Everything that, that, that pertains to us, God already has written down in the Lamb book of life. Nobody knows us like God. Uh, how precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me. Oh God, how vast is the sum of them. Well, let's take a look in Psalm 40 and 5 and see what it gives us any more insight as to what that verse just said to us. Amen. We thank God. We thank God that nobody knows us like God. Oh, my God. We thank God for that. Psalm 45 says, Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonderful works which you have done. Your thoughts toward us no one can compare with you. If I should declare and speak of, of them, they are too many to be numbered. Lord have mercy. That's a God that, that that's a God, that's someone, y'all, that knows us. And when I say knows us better than, than anybody, can't nobody know us like that because there's so many wonderful works that God has done for us and they can't even be numbered. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm. Well, all I know is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul just cries out hallelujah. If I can't thank him for nothing else, I'm going to thank him for just saving me. Lord, have mercy. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, if I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awoke, could I, could, could I count to the end? I would still be with you. That's right. Lord, have mercy. I would, oh, when I awoke, could I count to the end? I would still be with you. 
Amen. That, that's a good thing to know right there, y'all. Uh, we can't count them uh, uh, completely because, again, they're in, they're in, they're, the number is immeasurable, what God has, has, has done for us. But not only that, when I woke, oh, my God, when I woke, could I count to the end? I would still be with you. Oh, my God, when I woke, when I woke, when I awoke, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And sometimes in the Bible, it, it identifies death, y'all. You, you know, uh, oh, my God, uh, it identifies death sometimes that uh, the individual is at sleep. Is sleeping. Well, <coughs> the Word of God tells us in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. But then also, Jesus Christ told uh, the disciples, those that were following him, oh, yeah, he told a woman at the well about the drinking of the water. Those that drink from the well of the water that he had, that he provided from the well that he had, they would never thirst, nor would they never die. Why is that? Because even when they die in this life, amen, in the natural, when they go dust to dust, and, 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 and from the dust they come, and from the dust they must return, there is an afterlife. And if you have drank from the fountain that never runs dry, you're going to be sure of this. That when you awake from that, from your natural death, you will uh, take on a new body called glorified. And we don't know what we're going to appear, what we're going to be like, but we do know that when the Lord Jesus appeared, reappears, we're going to be just like him. And then he said this to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. And then, and then the apostle uh, Thomas says, well, you know what, um, uh, um, um, Jesus, let me just stop you right there, sir. I'm going to isogeet the text, y'all. He goes, let me just stop you right there. I understand what you're saying. And, and you know what? I know people got, they got this thing about me. They like to think that I'm just a doubter that I don't, but I'm just questioning you. I just need to know. We don't know the, uh, uh, where you're going, nor do we know the way that you're going. Jesus Christ, well, that's all right, Apostle Thomas. You asked a good question. I'm going to clarify that for you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And when you come through me, you will come into a glorious existence. Amen. In the new life. Amen. In the, in the afterlife, I should say. Amen. And, and oh my God, and you will be with me forever. I will still do, yeah, if you would only slay the wicked, O oh God, and the men of blood depart from me, who speak against you wickedly, your enemies who take your name in vain. Oh, yeah, do I not hate them, O oh Lord, who hate you? And am I not grieved? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. They have become my enemies. Now, now, I'm wondering why, I'm wondering why, right there, y'all, there was a shift right here in the, in the, in the word. Um, the, God was just telling them, uh, that, you know, that I know you, and I know you extremely well. All of a sudden, King David in the Psalms, and, and the word goes to this, uh, if only you would slay the wicked, O God, and the men of the blood depart from me. Let us look at Isaiah 11, chapter in the fourth verse, and see if we can't help us, help us get through that part. Y'all to understand why that shift may have occurred. But if not by way of the Holy Ghost, I believe he's going to speak to us in that regard. Amen. Isaiah 11, 4 says, But with a righteous and justice, uh, with, right, with righteousness and justice shall he judge the poor and decide with fairness for the meek, the poor and the dis downtrodden of the earth. And he shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Oh yeah, well we can understand that. Jesus Christ is the righteous judge. And he's going to judge everything, especially the wicked that think they're going to get away with things. Oh yeah, God, yeah, yeah. in the Psalm of Asaph, 73rd, 70, the 70, Psalm 73 is the Psalm of Asaph where he found himself pondering and wondering why was the wicked getting away with what they were getting away with and why they seem to be prospering when he's serving the Lord and he's not prospering in nothing, y'all. And he's having a problem. Well, why am I doing all of this and getting nothing, seemingly nothing, and they're doing nothing and they seem to get a lot? 
And he said, I almost, I almost turned, y'all. I almost went back to Egypt. I almost went back to my former life. I almost went back to sin because when I was living in sin, I was doing well. I was living large and in charge. And I parted all the time. Now I got a miserable life and I'm serving a God who says that he can provide all of my needs according to the riches and glory that exist with his son, Christ Jesus. I ain't seen none of these riches yet. I've seen nothing but hardship. I've seen despair. Lord help us. Lord help us. So, so if you would only slay the wicked, O oh God, and the men of blood depart from me. Well, you know what? That's absolutely a good thing to say because a vengeance is, is the war. The, the, oh, yeah. The, the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. Amen. So if anybody comes up against me, I absolutely don't not to be worried about it. Just give it to him. Why should I give it to him? Let's go back in the Psalms, y'all. We're still in the Psalm. We're still in the Psalm. Let's go to Psalm. Let us go to Psalm 23. And we're going to read this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. No, that's not what we're going to read. We're in the Amplified Bible. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. That's the proper translation of what the what it would say in the Aramaic and the, and the Hebrew, y'all. Because God, as we know, if you, well, hopefully we know, he don't supply wants, he supplies needs. The word of God says that he will supply all of our needs according to the riches and glory that exists within Christ Jesus. The reason why he don't supply wants, if we won't, if we want, we will always want. We will never be without wants. We'll have an insatiable desire to want and have more. Uh, uh, I liken that, y'all, to a, a line out of a, or a verse out of a song that uh, the late uh, uh, Prince Roger Nelson uh, 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 had in his song, Purple Rain. He said, maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. That's us in our wants. We'll never be satisfied. So God don't do that. But what does he do? He makes me to lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me besides the still and restful waters. That's right. God knows us, but nobody knows us like God. And the reason being, y'all, he makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. Why? We ain't got enough sense to do it. It's, and why do we not have a sense to do it? Because, again, it starts out saying the Lord is my shepherd, and we are like the sheep of his pasture. And guess what? If you don't know, and maybe people don't want to have this said in, in their hearing, but sheep, them is not to, that, those are not the smartest animals on the planet, y'all. Lord have mercy. <laughs> if you don't watch those sheep, if you don't guide those sheep, if they're on a hill, y'all, the sheep will absolutely walk off that hill. Just walk off the hill to a sudden death. Oh, remember what? Oh, no. Yeah. They'll walk off the hill to a sudden death. That's why they need a shepherd and a, and a shepherd dog to keep them in tow. So, therefore, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. He has to make us lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. Because we ain't got enough sense. And I use this illustration a lot. You got warning, early warning signs about something ain't right in your body. You feeling ill. You feeling sick. Uh, uh, something is not going on. So what do we do? Well, we first off, we just hold off for a while and see what's going to happen. We look around, see what we got in the medicine cabinet that we can use. And we may take a little bit of that, take a little of this. Or we go to the drugstore, local drugstore, pharmacy. Pick up something over the counter and take that and do that. And or we may consult or remember what grandma told us. And we'll use a remedy that, that she used. And then finally, we go on and go on and on. And we keep getting progressively worse. Well, finally, we may, we may call the doctor if we have a doctor to call. Some of us don't even have personal physicians. And or we may call or we may go to urgent care or the emergency room. Well, when we get there, we, the doctors tell us that, you know what, you should have been in here sooner. But now you have to be hospitalized uh, so that we can give you the proper antibiotics and so that you can uh, uh, allow your body to recuperate from itself, to recuperate itself. So what has happened right there? Well, God has made you to lie down in green pastures because you did not follow the warning signs. You did not heed 
what your body was telling you. And, and many of us, oh my God, oh my God, many of us are the same way in, in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost, whom God has given unto us who believe in him and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, he is our early warning sign. And he